In this video, I'm going to show you two ways to solve elastic collision problems with two unknown variables. In this problem, object 1 is 2 kilograms and moving towards the right at 5 meters per second. In front of object 1 is object 2, which has a mass of 1 kilogram and moving to the right at 2 meters per second. After object 1 bumps into object 2, what are their velocities? Since there are two unknowns, we're going to need two different equations to solve this problem. In an elastic collision, we know that momentum is conserved, and we also know that kinetic energy is conserved. First, we'll substitute the mass and velocity into the conservation of momentum equation. Next, we will solve for V2 final. On the left-hand side, we have 2 times 5, which is 10, plus 2 times 1 is 2, so we have 12 on the left, and 2V1 final plus V2 final on the right. And then we're going to solve for V2. V2 final is equal to 12 minus 2V1 final. We're going to bracket this because we're going to come back and use this equation later on. Next, we're going to write an equation that shows that the kinetic energy is also conserved in an elastic collision. We'll also substitute our mass and velocity into this equation. Notice that the one-halves all cancel out. This leaves us with, on the left-hand side, 50 plus 2 squared is 4 equals 2v1 final squared plus v2 final squared. Combining the terms on the left, we get 54 equals to 2v1 final squared plus v2 final squared. Okay, so now we have these two equations, the one above and the one down here, and we have two variables, but we also have two equations. So we're going to take the equation up here, this v2 final, and then we're going to take it and we're going to substitute it in here. Next, we're going to uh, move all of our terms towards the right and set it equal to zero. We also have a term on the right here that's squared, so we're going to go ahead and square that out. Now I'm going to combine some of the terms. Now at this point you could use the quadratic equation, but I think I'm going to try to solve this by factoring. That would be kind of the easier way to do this. I'm going to divide 6 on both sides, and then I have two possible solutions here. So I'm going to go ahead and factor. I get uh, v1 final minus 3, v1 final minus 5. Okay, so my possible solutions are v1 final is equal to 3, positive 3, or v1 final is equal to positive 5, and these are going to be meters per second. So why do I have uh, two different solutions? And the reason is because one of these solutions is for before the collision, and the other solution is for after the collision. So if we go back to our problem, we'll see that before the collision, um, object 1 had a velocity of 5 meters per second. And so we know that after the collision, it's not going to be 5. It's going to be the other number, which is going to be 3 meters per second. And then to find v2 final, we just take this 3 and we put it back into our equation, this equation right here, so 3 squared is 6, 12 minus 6 is 6, so v2 final is also going to be, v2 final is also going to be 6 meters per second. Okay, so that's one way to solve it. I'm going to show you a shortcut next to uh, solving this without having to do any factoring at all. So now I'm going to show you a shortcut method to solving elastic uh, collision problems with two variables. You will need the equation that we derived from the first part of this video using the conservation of momentum. So the shortcut method is this. It's using v1 initial plus v1 final is equal to v2 initial plus v2 final. So I'm going to apply this equation. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you how we derive this equation. In physics, it's really important to understand how we got these equations because that's the physics part. Otherwise, you're just doing a math problem. Okay, so this is the shortcut method. So V1 initial is 5. V1 final is what we're looking for. And then V2 initial is 2 plus V2 final, what we're looking for.
All right, so I'm going to move the 5 to the, towards the right. So I got v1 final equals v2 final minus 3. Okay, so now I'm going to take this equation and then I'm going to substitute it in here. It gives me v1 final equals 12 minus 2 v1 final minus 3. And I'm going to move the 2 v1 final to the left. That gives me 3 v1 final equals uh, 12 minus 3 is 9. So v1 final equals uh, 9 divided by 3 is 3 meters per second. And that's it. And we solved it. And then if you take that 3 meters per second and, and, and plug it back into our equation on the right there, we have 3 squared is 6, 12 minus 6 is 12, so we get that V2 final equals 6 meters per second. All right, so super fast, super fast method. All right, but we need to understand how we got this equation. And that's what I want to take a moment to uh, show you. Okay, so the first step is we're going to write down our conservation momentum equation and also the equation showing that kinetic energy is conserved. We're going to move all the m1 terms to the left for both equations. And then we're also going to move all the m2 terms to the right. Next, we're going to factor out the m1s on the left and on the right hand side we're going to factor out m2. For kinetic energy we can also cancel out one half on both sides. Also kinetic energy we're gonna factor out the m1 on the left and then factor out m2 on the right. All right and then if you notice for the um, energy side that this is a difference of squares so I'm gonna factor that out into v1 initial minus v1 final times v1 initial plus v1 final Okay, now you're going to notice that this term right here looks just like this term right here. So we're going to take this term over here and we're going to substitute that in there. All right, so this looks like a complete mess here. All right, but it's going to it's going to simplify uh, pretty soon. So the M2, these cancels out. The V2 final minus V2 initial, those are going to cancel out. And that leaves us with V1 initial plus V1 final equals V2 final plus V2 initial. And there you have it. This is our shortcut method for solving elastic collision problems with two unknowns. Now there's a third method that's even faster. If you're interested in that, please check out my next video.